12. Tony Drago to break. Trailing and the heat practice. right now on Oliver Ortman. And you just get the feeling that Drago senses it. Shot on the one. He's like a predator now, like a cat. You see the break off, the wing ball down, he's landed on the one, and Drago now stocks the balls. Great shot to clear the path to the blue, too. He made that look like it was over the pocket. Ellis. Yes, this would be a Jericho job. The walls could come tumbling down for Ortman. Drago keeps this up. Well, he's looking at the orange five to the six. That's the combination or the plant that he's going to be looking at after this four ball. And if it could go wrong, Sid, it's going to be in this form. This is a big shot and a bigger moment. Hardly waiting for the ball to stop. So confident. Ah, you were right, Jim. That was... He was there waiting for the white. A little quick, that needed a little bit more care and attention. Sometimes you take these big pockets for granted, and on that, on that occasion, crowd stunned, as is Tony. And boy, he could have planted that mistake, that missed three in the last frame. Where Ortman let him in, he could have really planted that in Oliver's memory banks had he taken a few more racks. Checks back off the cush. Very straight on this black. Now he's got this little angle to come up to the right of the nine. Or screws around the other side of it. Now runs on. Well, Oliver stems the tide from 6-1. He finds himself 7-5 ahead. He'll be breaking to make that 8-5, but Drago right now suffering. Rack 13, Oliver Ortman to break, leading seven racks to five. That's Oliver Ortman. And he's breaking off. He just won a big one there. 7-5 in front. Ortman. Concentration could very easily have been affected by Drago's charge. He's a big lad. Playing a heavyweight as Oliver, but he's playing a thoroughbred. Drago still in this. Yes, right now, that's the situation. Ortman back in the driver's seat. Looking right now. What's the plan here, Jim? He's just going to push out, it looks like, Sid. Well, they reckon I reckon the mood that Tony's in uh, could reply fairly offensively if you get me drift. Well, he knew the three didn't pass, and Tony's put him back in again. This is a disturbed former world champion, the German lad, here. Drago playing Muck on Nettles pool, meaning all or nothing. Gold or rust. Cool, cool aroma, is the kid. Well, Tony, no stranger to the television cameras. Little wave to everybody at home. Oh, we've seen Quentin and Han chatting up the girls while in play this seat, as it were. Tony Drago waving to the fans, despite being under the cosh, 7 5, but playing like a dream. Given the former world champion, all sorts of bother here in Cardiff. Well, Oliver obviously. He obviously wasn't quite sure exactly what he wanted to do there, even in playing the push out. Played at the speed of takeoff at Cape Kennedy, this. Yeah. But Tony, on the other hand, was. Beautiful shot. No problem there, he's on the four. And the four's down already. 
Got to be careful here. And once again, Drago with a let off. And he can't believe it. Again, the same sort of shot, Sid. I just felt that he had to be a little cautious with that one. Now, it's a good news, bad news story, though. Tony hasn't left a clear path to this five. If Oliver wants to pot it, it's going to be cushioned first. And there you can see the reason why. Thin contact off the cushion. Kick shot here. Yeah. Couldn't have played that any better. And look at the six and the seven. Another look. Just flicks the five in. As thin as gossamer, that flick. The fascination of the game is the almost thunderous crash into the break, and then suddenly the deft use of all the delicate skills of a surgeon. Except the cuts are not physical, but some of them the unkindest of all, as the man said. It's three at five. Well, that nine knows for Oliver Ortman, he is just one rack away now from a place in the last 32. Fifteen years of pro. That's the experience. Started slow against Janka. But 7-2 against Deeks. Lost uh, Fong Pang. Pete Wiseman. Pete Stevenson. Break, of England. Not a good sign for Drago. Oliver's got one off the break. He's got a shot at the one. Not easy. He's going to be bridging right over the eight. But the three is sitting on the middle bag, and the pink four is asking to be potted top left. And that's the storyline, Sid. He doesn't have to do anything difficult with the white. Just concentrate on the pot, and the finish line will be in front of him. What a performance by Tony Drago. The snooker players have brought precision, brilliant control of the white in Davis's case, and what they call braggadocio by Drago. This is the shot. Overcut it. He's given Drago a chance, and what a chance it is. Now Tony, to stay alive, needs to clear up here. Yes. Drago can win this match if he makes no mistakes. Looks like he's going to get the chance to repeat what he did earlier when he ran three. Well. If he runs three after this one, we could have one of the biggest upsets ever in full. The nine deposited, and Drago is pulled to 8-6. He needed the chance, he's got it. Now time will tell on what the Typhoon can make of it. Black 15, Tony Drago to break. And if you're thinking of settling down and watch another hour of this fun and games here, yeah. can I advise you not to put the kettle on, but to get cool drinks? Because with Jimmy White coming on next, the pace will just get hotter. Yes, the problem ball here is the red three. Tony's going to need good position, <laughs> one and two, down in close proximity to each other. He's going to need a nice angle to get over for that red three. 
that could hold a key to success in this one, showing you where he wants the cue ball to be. Just out into the center of the table. That's what he needs. Not too hard. Didn't even touch the side. That's perfect. They're not hitting the edges. Holy precision of his yes as a snooker player. Now bearing strange fruit. Fruit laced with passion. Playing like a man inspired Drigo. Crowd know it, empathizing like mad with him. Well, Tony's no stranger to big time action and big time pressure. And right now, he's cooking it up here. The pot is getting stirred. Seven, Drago just one adrift and two for the biggest upset in this event thus far. And is the German Eagle stranded? Look at this. It's all happening right now. They're there again. Well, he said, Jim, that his biggest upset of the tournament. Well, one of the biggest upsets in televised nine ball pool, I'd, I'd have thought. Yeah. Well, one thing about it, Sid, anyone that does tend to underrate any of these snooker players can sometimes do so at their peril. Drago. Steve Davis, Jimmy, any one of these guys with the ability that they possess, they can put anybody out of the tournament. In this game of nine ball, you can live and die sometimes on one miss and a break. But Drago does it in the blink of an eye. Perfect position for the nine ball to draw level and he'll break next. Crowd will lift the roof here. Yeah. And it's down to a one-rack decider between Oliver Ortman, a former world champion, and Tony Drago, one of the snooker professionals drawn into this event. What a match. And the stage is set. And we're not far from Tiger Bay in the Cardiff Docks. And Drago, a wonderful gesture. Shaking hands with a former world champion. Supposed to say, this is it, mate, and it is. Whoever takes this rack wins. How's he looking on the two, Jim? Well, he'd love that one to have stayed on the table, Sid. But everyone's on their edge of their seats here, including you and I. He's got a shot at the two. And if there was anyone around you wanted to knock in a good pot, Drago would be high on that list. Ah, cut away. But he's left a snooker, I think. Not full. Well, he's offered his hand in apology, but the drama heightens here. The main table, you know it's going to produce a lot more drama as on the unfolding days, Sid. But this is the cover to the story right here. I'm sure, the, uh, I'm not kidding, uh, the word's spreading by word of mouth, and there's people just droving in here. Yeah, shouldn't think there's a pub with a what, sky screen. It's got anybody in within half a mile here. They're flooding in, watch this. There's Drago, it's 8-8 eight, eight, Hill Hill with the former world champion. Well, Oliver's looking. He's just seeing where he can contact it. He'd like to try and pot this in the middle. That's what he's looking at right now. But the contact is so important here. Ashen faced, Ashen faced the former world champion, Oliver Altman. One world champion's already gone out of this today, Takahishi, the reigning world champion. The drama and the tension, incredible. Well, he'd be happy with that. Ensured to hit the lower side of the two. He had a look at the middle pocket, and that would have been putting all his eggs in one basket. 
That's a good shot, Jonas. That's brilliant. Well, well, that's uh, <laughs> that was the sort of a lash. I think that's in the book as a lash. Uh, uh, the pocket's blocked though. This does not go past the black, I don't think. Blow two. Yes, for as fast as some of these racks have been, here we are on this. It's the last one, the 17th of a possible 17. Finally poised 8-8, eight, eight, and this one looks to be the longest of the lot. And isn't it fitting? What's his best bet here, Jim? With a pot blocked. Intermediate. Oh, he'll be looking Surely. to try and get that white ball right in behind that eight, Sid. He never did it, but has he got the two? Well, he's potted the eight, but has he snookered himself on the two? Unbelievable. I thought he was thinking about the black there, the intermediate shot. Watch this. Didn't intend the eight to go in. He was just trying to lay that two behind the wall of balls. Look now. He can get through to the two, it looks like. But leaving it where he might leave it for a snooker, it's got to be dead because those two are in line. Hiding it down near the yellow, near the nine, is very, very tricky. And very risky, Sid, because it would mean a very thin contact. <laughs> Deciding rack. And he's taking and a lot of time, isn't he? I mean rack. First one on it, the former world champion, Oliver Ortman. Cuest extraordinaire. Won most titles you could name. One of the most vital shots he'll ever play. And the loser on the boat, Sid. The long road home. Six balls remaining. And look at the 4-9 plant at the bottom right. So really, the two holds the key to victory in this frame. The last rack of the match. The Drago gets the first rated. kick at it. Here we go. Bad shot. A bad shot for the first time Oliver showed a glimpse of temperament. He didn't bang the cue. He just dropped the cue head to the floor. Drago's in perfect position on the red top right to come down to accept the plant. The sensation here on the fourth day of the World Pool Championships. The 4-9. Here's the 4-9. One world champion's already gone out. Takahashi, the reigning one, is a former one going to follow suit? He didn't rush this one. This is curtains for Altman, but he low overhit it. The shoulder went there, Sid. Everything went. The shoulder. And that was a sign of nerves. The finish line was there. He needed a velvet glove. He gave it the kitchen sink. But he still might not drown. This is a very awkward leave on the pink. He just plots the green in the center, Sid. I fear the worst for Tony right now. If Tony gets to the table again, It'll be a major miscue from Ortman. Having said that, Drago's enjoyed himself out there. You know it. He's going to get another chance. He's running very, very straight. That's, oh, what a leave. That is nearly, that is 2% away from the worst leave he could leave. <laughs> I even see the funny side. Oh, you got to give it to Ortman to see the funny side of hell. Well, actually, Tony had cracked a joke. I don't know what he said, but he got the crowd laughing and he got Oliver laughing. The moment you can cut this with a knife out there right now. But and you're going to need a very sharp knife to cut that orange. One of these is going to be going home. And certainly, it'll be the tournament's loss. Be great to have them both in, but one of them 
is going to be going home. What a shot Ortman's got here. The whole drum are punctuated by the crack of the balls on the mezzanine where other games are in progress. But What's the shot then? Well, Sid, he's got a chance to bank it bottom left. He can try and hold the cue ball up there and hide behind the nine. He doesn't have a lot of options here, to be honest. The nine takes away the square up shot where he just try and banks it back to the bottom cushion. I think he's got to try and bank this in the bottom left corner. The, the very, very, very thin cut left is far too risky. It well, square up. that's what he's looking at right now. But again, it's not an attacking safety, it's a defending safety. And you know, you've got the steering wheel in your hands right now. If you're going to go down sometimes, and I know a lot of these players like to think this way, they want to go down firing. He may be trying to cut it in the top pocket. But it could go square or miss higher up. It's got to be absolutely perfect, this conduct. Oh, that's a tremendous shot. Worthy. Sean Worthy in, getting him out of trouble. Crowd know it. That was the shot of a maestro under duress. This to take the game, but what a game. It took a great performance and a great shot from the machine Oliver Ortman to put out Tony Drago, but put him out he did, and Ortman advances by the narrowest of matches, 9-8.